one evening long ago in a bar on the Upper West Side, I had a near-death experience in the men's room. I know you might be asking, what were you doing in the Upper West Side? <laughs> but um, I lived there in a one room, one window mouse estate. And um, I had a, a friend who was visiting um, from out of town, from Boston. And uh, I don't know if uh, any of you know anyone like this, um, but I had, she's a, um, my friend's, she's a, she's a Virgo. <laughs> Which is very tense to have a visiting Virgo in your life. Um, because um, they're very organized and they expect you to behave like an organization. Um, when they visit, you have to make a reservation. You have to confirm the reservation. You have to wear very clean clothes. Um, and you can't wear like your really nice shirt with your pants from Friday. You have to wear, they, they'll know. Um, so she was visiting and so I was, I was really trying to get things planned. So we were uh, gonna go to a bar, uh, have one drink. We had one drink and we sat outside. And then when we were leaving to head downtown, um, she said, you know what, I gotta hit the bathroom because um, she always has to go to the bathroom when we're leaving somewhere because she's very orderly with everything, including her urine. So, um, so I was like, okay. So we go to this uh, line, there's a very long line full of women. And as many of you women may know, I don't know if men do it, but uh, when there's just no men, then we're like, oh, we'll use the men's room too, because in, in this case, there was no stall, no nothing, just one room. And um, so when we were using it, they came out, they looked the same. And so it seemed fine. So uh, when we got up there, my friend says, you know, I want you to know, I am not gonna use the men's room. And I say, I know that you were born at the end of August and that the most relaxing time of the year, and for that reason, you would never urinate in an improper locale. I will. So I go into the men's room, it's awesome in there. It's clean, it's dry, it's painted, it's everything. And But there's on the um, door, there is a host of choices, which seems to be a thing in Manhattan, where like there's like the big slidey bar and the small slidey bar, and then there's like a fisherman's hook that someone stapled there, and then there's like another lock, whatever. So there's choices. So I picked one, and I picked the wrong one. So, um, that was my first problem. So uh, anyway, I peed peacefully, it was nice. And then when I tried to put myself together, I realized that the pants I was wearing were pants I never wore. And so the zipper was very finicky, and it was the kind of zipper that's on the side. Um, and I don't know if you know about this, but like the, the clasp, and when it's on the side, it's always like a secret, so it's as small as possible. And it was like sleeping, si sleeping bag uh, variety size. It was going really far down for me, and there was no button or anything to keep it together while you worked on it, so it was just my pants were coming down. And so while I was trying to piece this together, a man came in. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And he walked back out, shut the door. I went, Ooh. And then um, the door popped open. And he, uh, same man, he says, this is the men's room. <laughs> and so he was like, he had like a pink button down shirt in his, tucked in his jeans, loafers, kind of co uh, conservative male pompadour sort of thing. Um, and he was in his 30s, and I was in my 20s. So uh, I said, you know, I tried to explain the line, I tried to explain that my zipper, I'm like, I just need a sec, I just need one sec. And he's like, I don't think you understand. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you to get out. Maybe he had to poop, or like something <laughs> was cresting, or I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I was later told that this bar was a cocaine bar, which may explain some of the bathroom problems. But anyway, um, I also had a bodily problem, which was that um, besides my pants, I was wearing underwear that um, my aunt had sent me. I don't know if you've ever had relatives send you undergarments, but they're not usually the best. So she would send me stuff like a wolf with round, rhinestone eyes on the underwear or something, just whatever. 
And so this this pair was uh, a reptile theme, but um, it it was I, it was only in the front the cloth. The rest was just a band, a black band for a waist, and then there was a band in the back. So these pants are coming undone. I feel very exposed, and I just tell the guy, I say, look, I, I there's no way that I'm going to make another bad decision. I've made several right now, and I'm not going to go out there. Like, no. He's a, and so I'm like, go get the bouncer, go get the manager, or whatever. He said, I'm not going to get anybody. I'm going to throw you out. And so he comes at me. And so the, the bathroom was a, a bigger bathroom. like, And he had already no longer been in the doorway. He was inside the bathroom. And there was like a door area, the sink, the toilet. And then there was some room to recoil. Um, so I had recoiled. And um, he was coming at me, and I was like, okay, the number one priority is to keep your pants on. So I had both of my hands on these the pants, and I was sort of like, you know, he'll, he'll grab this arm, and you'll kind of just stiffen or whatever. And then all of a sudden, my knee got an idea. And then my hands were like, we got this. But my hand's job was to keep my pants on, but they quit that job. And so when my knee did this, my hand, my, I shoved him out of the bathroom, and I don't really remember how, because it seems very hard. But I did do it, and then um, he was just, and then I shut the door and locked all of the locks. And then, uh, for the men in the room, I have never done this before or since. The noise alone that it makes is enough of a deterrent. But um, anyway, so then I was locked in the bathroom and I was shaking and I was like, I don't know what happened. This is crazy. And so um, I ended up uh, being like, what were you doing before this happened? And I was like, oh, I was putting my pants. So I did that. And with one clean boop, uh, the zipper's fine. And now I'm trapped in the bathroom, preferably for all eternity, because I don't want to come out. And I have a strong impulse not to come out. But my friend's waiting for me, and it's not that busy in that bar, and I, it's maybe obvious she's waiting for me, and he's out there, and I'm like, fuck, you, this is just your, your own personal action film, you're gonna get the girl, and you're gonna get her, you know? And so I'm like, okay, so I, you know, I go, and he's out there, and he's like, he's saying that there's a whore, and she's in the bathroom, and she has her pants around her ankles, and then he says, like, I pay his tab. And, you know, because the horror attack, right? So I don't know, like, there's all this chaos. So when I come out, she's like, do you know that guy? And I, I can't possibly tell her what's happened. So I'm like, we just have to run. We have to run, okay? Run. And I won't look at him because I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed that I've been driven to this point. And um, I just, he's just a, a pink blur. And so I, I almost make it out with her. And the doorman says, is that guy bothering you? And I said, no, 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 no. No, we were leaving. And then uh, I get, but in this mini conversation, the guy realizes I'm out. So he goes outside, and within, I don't know, three seconds, he tries to throw me over a railing outside. There was a, the place is called the Evelyn Lounge. I don't know if you ever, anyone's been to that. And there was a basement floor. And um, so there was like uh, stairs that went down and then there was a railing outside. So he basically tried to throw me over the deepest point and I kind of like came out of my shoes and went all the way back and I could feel like you're gonna land head first. And then somehow I was a little bit too short or uh, somehow uh, the railing was a little bit too high, I don't know, but I, I landed back in my shoes and then the doorman said, are you okay? And I went, yep. And then they were just beating the man from the bathroom into a payphone, like the shed part they used to have, you know, that thing, they just hit him in that. And I was like, and then they were like, don't hurt a woman. He's like, I'm gonna kill her. I'm gonna fuck her, kill her. You know, and he just keeps saying it. And I'm just like, wow. And then over there, my friend is in a cab, and she's talking me through the window, and she's like, why are you just standing there listening? Come on, so I we flee. But then I'm obsessed with the doorman. I'm obsessed with them. I'm like, you know, what if the police come and need to know my name, my number, blah blah. And um, and so uh, anyway, I also am worried 
that like, I don't know, I just want to give them a gift. I want to, should I get them a Starbucks gift card? <laughs> should I make them stuffed mushroom caps? Like, you know, I just like thinking, she's like, no, just go back and say thank you. So I'm like, okay, so days later I go back and it's not the same day. And um, the guys that had saved me had like long braids and they were like, with, like Jamaican, like hit them. And um, this guy had like shorter hair. And I was talking to him and he said to me, you know, um, none of that would have happened if you had just told us when we asked you. And I, I you know, none of that stuff outside. And I said, well, I was ashamed of myself. I, I peed in the wrong place. And then someone said something to me about it. So I struck them in the channels. Like, that's what I, you know, that's a version of the story. And so he was like, yeah, but no, no. He said, do you ever see the Terminator? And I was like, yeah. And then he was like, you know how all those things get, like all that information comes across his like mind screen when he sees somebody? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, you do that. When someone comes into the room and you're by yourself with them, you can read things. He's like, you have something, something called instincts. And he said, you know, so if somebody's in a room with you and they're so temperamental, they might throw you over a balcony to your death <laughs> over nothing. You can read that and react to it. You have to trust your instincts. And I said, even if they make me look crazy? And he said, yeah, you have to trust your instincts. And I said, even if it seems really, really stupid? And he said, trust your instincts. And I said, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.